The day we're taking a look at these MLB matches, which are happening on Wednesday, May 17, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money. You will find the link to our Patreon in the description and comments section below. Kansas City Royals vs San Diego Padres. Kansas City won 4 of 5 recently, but couldn't sustain the momentum it generated from those wins, dropping its next 4 straight. Are the Royals capable of more than an occasional winning streak in 2023? KC scores 4.02 runs per game, 25th, and hits .233, 23rd, with a .687 ops, 24th. It's hit 43 homers, 21st, and stolen 28 bases, 14th this season. The Royals pitching staff has compiled a 5.40 ERA, 28th, and a 1.44 whip, 26th, with 6 quality starts. San Diego earned a much-needed victory on Monday against Kansas City, as starting pitcher Michael Wacha took a no-hitter into the eighth inning, and the Padres' lineup put more than a couple of runs on the scoreboard. Can South Dakota ride the momentum into a longer winning streak after falling flat in recent series versus LA? The Padres averaged 3.93 runs per contest, 26th, and hit .224, 30th, with a .695 ops, 21st. They've hit 45 long balls, 15th, and stolen 26 bases, 18th this season. The San Diego pitching staff has posted a 3.94 ERA, 11th, and a 1.26 whip, 12th, with 18 quality starts. I'm predicting the Royals will win or lose a close game tomorrow. San Diego isn't winning like a team with a top 5 peril, as its Ballyhood lineup has underproduced thus far. It's also just 11-11 straight up with an 8-12 run line record at home this season. With that said, I believe KC will score enough to at least keep the game close at Petco Park tomorrow. Our team pick is Royals RL and Diego's pitching staff has been lights out in May, as well as they lead baseball with a 2.41 team ERA, so Kansas City is not going to score many runs at all. All in all, go with the under as well. Los Angeles Angels vs Baltimore Orioles. The Angels will send Griffin Canning to the mound on Wednesday. Canning was clobbered again in his previous outing, surrendering five runs, including a home run in only 3.2 innings against the Astros, and was charged with a loss. The young starter has not been sharp, conceding five runs in back-to-back -back starts, and his ERA has dipped to 6.38, along with a 1.38 whip and a 2-1 record in 24 innings. Canning has struggled in limited action against Baltimore, conceding 15 runs in 9.1 career innings. The Halos are on a seven-game road trek. They dropped two of three meetings in Cleveland on the weekend due to subpar pitching, allowing 16 runs. LA has now lost two of their last three road series. The Angels have been hit or miss recently and are 5-5 in their last 10 games. The Los Angeles Angels have been inconsistent, winning only three of their last nine games. The Baltimore Orioles continue to deliver, winning five out of their last seven games to climb seven games above .500 at home. They won two of three against the Rays and Pirates in their last two series furthermore, Angels starter Griffin Canning has been rocked, conceding five runs in two straight outings. The O's definitely have a capable offense that will make him pay. O's starter Kyle Bradish is confident after posting his best outing of the season, where he sailed through six shutout innings against the Pirates last time out. Our team pick is Baltimore Orioles. Kyle Bradish will get the call for the seventh time of the season on Wednesday. Bradish was outstanding last time out, allowing one run, zero earned, and struck out six in six innings against the Pirates, resulting in a no decision in a game the Orioles won. The right-hander has been inconsistent in limited action and has recorded a subpar 4.56 ERA and a 1.48 whip, accompanied by a 1-1 record in 25.2 innings. This marks his first career meeting against the Angels. The Orioles continue to shine and remain in second place in the AL East. They collected two victories in three meetings against the Rays last week, followed by a series win against the Pirates last weekend, limiting them to only seven runs. The pitching has been solid, conceding four or fewer runs in seven of their last eight games. Our total pick is over 8.5 runs. Washington Nationals vs Miami Marlins. Washington split their four games with the Mets as they battered New York in the series finale Monday afternoon. The Nationals entered Tuesday night 18-23 on the season and stood in the basement of the NL East, eight games behind the Braves for the top spot in the division. On Monday Washington banged out 15 hits, led by Joey Menezes, 4 RBI, who had 4, and Lane Thomas, 3 runs, who chipped in 3. C.J. Abrams hit his fourth homer of the season in the win for the Nationals. Patrick Corbin, 2-5, turned in a quality start as he picked up a win by throwing six innings. 
He allowed two runs on eight hits with one walk and one strikeout before departing. Miami snapped a two-game skid and avoided a sweep at the hands of the Reds by prevailing in the series finale Sunday. The Marlins entered Tuesday night 20-21 on the season and stood tied for second in the NL East, six games behind the Braves for the top spot. On Sunday afternoon, Brian De La Cruz, run, RBI, had three hits, while John Birdie, Gary Cooper, run, RBI, and Luis Ares each added a pair in the victory. Braxton Garrett didn't factor in the decision as he threw five innings, allowing one run on three hits with one walk and eight strikeouts. Tanner Scott, 3-1, earned the win with a scoreless inning, allowing one hit with no walks and a strikeout, while Dylan Floro threw a scoreless ninth, allowing no hits with one walk and one strikeout for his second save. Washington has been up and down this season as they continue to try and get their youth movement to take hold. The Nationals have some decent pieces, but Gore has struggled to go deep in games of late as he has labored to retire hitters. Washington has the ability to put together some decent offensive numbers, but consistency is a problem. With that said, they're facing a guy in Cabrera who leads the league in handing out free passes and who has handed out a .366 on-base percentage to opposing hitters on the year. Menezes should lead the way, and the Nationals' bullpen slams the door on a weak Marlins lineup to deliver a win for the visitors in this contest. Our team pick is Washington Nationals. Edward Cabrera is slated to take the mound for the Marlins as he makes his ninth start of the season in this contest. He comes in 2-3 with a 5.35 ERA, a 1.67 whip, a league-high 30 walks and 49 strikeouts over 35.1 innings of work on the season. Cabrera didn't factor in the decision in his last start, which came last Wednesday on the road against the Diamondbacks. He threw 3.1 innings, allowing four runs on two hits with four walks and five strikeouts in a game the Marlins went on to win 5-4. In his last three starts, Cabrera is 1-1 with a 4.70 ERA, a 1.57 whip, 7 walks and 18 strikeouts over 15.1 innings of action. Cabrera makes his fourth career start against the Nationals in this contest. He comes in 1-1 with a 3.94 ERA, a 1.063 whip, 5 walks and 9 strikeouts over 16 innings of work against them. Cabrera is 5-4 with a 4.43 ERA, a 1.365 whip, 38 walks and 63 strikeouts over 63 innings of work in 13 career starts at Lone Pop Park. Our total pick is over. New York Yankees vs Toronto Blue Jays. The Yankees will have ace Jared Cole on the mound. Cole hasn't been quite at his best recently, squandering four homers in his last two starts after allowing two runs in five innings against the Rays last weekend, resulting in a no decision in a game the Yankees won. The veteran is having a spectacular year, conceding two or fewer runs in all but one start, and has registered a dazzling 2.22 ERA and a 1.04 whip, complemented by a 5-0 record in 56.2 innings. Cole amassed 5.2 shutout innings against the Blue Jays last month and stands at 6-2 with a 3.48 ERA in 13 career meetings. The Yankees are looking dangerous at the plate recently. They obliterated the A's pitching staff last week and also exploited the Rays, scoring 22 runs in the last three games of that series last weekend. They are still playing without Josh Donaldson and Giancarlo Stanton. Stanton is due back next month. Aaron Judge was quiet in the first series against the Jays, recording just one base hit but hit two home runs in Monday's win and another homer on Tuesday. The 31-year-old slugger is producing, delivering 10 RBIs and a 1.3 ops in his last eight games, and now has 11 homers 26 RBIs and a strong .960 ops on the year. Judge is 1 for 3 in his career against Chris Bassett. The Yankees are scoring an average of 4.63 runs per game, marking them 13th. The pitching staff has amassed a 3.89 team ERA, placing them ninth. The Yankees are mediocre on the road where they are only 9-9 this season, the Blue Jays have only lost five home games. They won't be happy after losing the first two games of this series. They have been a resilient squad and I expect them to rebound. Furthermore, the Blue Jays have plenty of experience against Yankees starter Jared Cole. The ace struggled against the Jays last year, where he allowed 10 runs in 18 innings, equating to a poor 5.00 ERA. The Jays are technically the dog in this one, and that value is hard to pass on, considering how dominant Blue Jays starter Chris Bassett has been. The righty has not allowed a single run in his last two starts spanning 16 innings, highlighted by a complete game shutout against the Braves. He is sporting a 2.73 ERA at home. Our team pick is Toronto Blue Jays. Chris Bassett will take the mound for the ninth time of the season. Bassett was brilliant in his previous start, registering the complete game shutout against the Braves in a 3-0 victory. The veteran is zoned in, recording 16 consecutive scoreless innings, and has improved his ERA to 3.49, along with a 1.08 whip and a 5-2 record in 49 innings pitched. 
Bassett held the Yankees to only two runs in six innings in his lone career meeting. The Blue Jays are in a groove, posting a 6-3 record in their last nine games, highlighted by a sweep of the Braves on the weekend. The squad has yet to lose a series at the Rogers Center and stand a 3-1 on the current homestand entering Tuesday after a 7-4 loss in the series opener. Our total pick is over. Tampa Bay Rays vs New York Mets. The Tampa Bay Rays have the best record in baseball. After beating the New York Yankees 8-7 on Sunday, the Rays stayed in town and after an off day hung up eight runs again, this time in Queens, to beat the Mets. Isaac Paredes led the charge going 2-for-3 with two home runs and five RBI in the victory. I took the Rays yesterday with Verlander on the hill for the Mets. With Senga facing the most dangerous lineup he has ever faced, I see no reason to go against the Rays here, especially at such a reasonable price. The Mets are a mess right now, and Tampa Bay has been the most complete team in baseball. The Rays are 8-1 in their last nine interleague road games against a team with a losing record, and the Mets are just 6-16 in their last 22 overall. Take the Rays. The New York Mets' disappointing start continued in Tuesday's loss, as Justin Verlander was booed by the home crowd. The Mets are now three games below .500, fourth in the NL East, and 6.5 games behind the first-place Braves. The New York offense has not been as strong as expected. After the first 23 games, the Mets are 19th in batting average, .240, ops, .704, and home runs, 1.0 page. They are also only 21st in scoring 4.3, 21st. Pete Alonso leads the team with 14 home runs and 33 RBI. Our total pick is over.